The fundamental shift between NGAC and the current approach is that NGAC takes a more ABAC approach where you actually specify policies in terms of attributes and then what you do is you define users in terms of attributes and resources in terms of attributes so you don't have to manage users associations with privileges directly or access or objects associations with access control entries um, directly it all becomes automatic and NGAC is based on a set of relations and it, versus a uh, underlying set of rules. What that does is it makes the ability to delegate privileges much easier. It allows you to query the, the, the policy database and ask important questions like who has access to what resources, who can access a particular resource, why can't a user access a particular resource. So it's a new approach in that not only are you able to specify policies, but you're able to specify combinations of policies and a very rich set of policies at that. The problems with the current technologies is the, the ability to, to perform those as reviews. So um, what often happens is that privileges are enabled for users. Um, in the end, sometimes an organization really doesn't understand what a user's privileges are within in the organization. So the ability to reason about policies and visualize policies and be able to review policies is, uh, is hugely, hugely important. NGAC could be, the, the, the beauty is that it's a standard and it could be implemented in a wide variety of environments. So it could be implemented for a single application. It could be implemented across an entire virtual enterprise. The resources are agnostic to the, to the access control mechanism. So you compute decisions in terms of objects, which is just a logical entity. But that logical en entity maps to real resources. But the, the, the location of that resource and what that resource actually is doesn't make any difference until after the, the, the access control process has come to a completion and it's, uh, the data is returned and presented to the application, only at that point does the actual content of data or, or the resource come into play. Prior to that, the entire access control process, whether it's a, um, computing a decision, enforcing policy, um, analyzing the policy, all that can occur um, without knowing the location or the type of resource that, that's actually coming into play. The, the use case I think that most people have in, in place when they think of access control is data, but NGAC could be implemented and it is being implemented in Internet of Things. It could be used in a service mesh. So data is just one use case. It just happens to be the use case that most people have in mind. NGAC is, is very similar to um, XACML in that they're both ABAC um, standards, but XACML is implemented using rules and the, the policies are actually expressed in terms of rules directly. In NGAC, we express policies in terms of relations. As a consequence of those relations, you formulate rules. So the rules allow, the relations provide many advantages because what we do is we treat attributes as containers and what we can actually do is express the entire policy as a graph of containers on, on resources and containers on, on, on users and they're bridged by operations that can be performed on a set of users and a set of objects. What that does is it allows you to carve up this, this graph into very um, large administrative domains. So you can start off with, say, a super user, can delegate to somebody who might be able to manage a particular division. That division manager can delegate to somebody to manage groups. So you can carve up this, this graph into a multitude of different administrative domains. It allows that, that, that delegation of privileges starting from a, a super user with a completely empty set of, of policies all the way to a full-blown 
enterprise. So NGAC, it's, it's considered successful, but I'm not satisfied. It's successful because there's a, a number of projects that are being conducted under NGAC. I don't feel at liberty to necessarily, because some of them are, are proprietary implementations, but it's also being used at universities. I receive phone calls from people from all over the world interested in our software and starting projects, but that's not enough. What I would like to do is see it not only used in-house, but I want to see a commercial product where someone would be able to take a product off the shelf and deploy it in different in, in environments so that it becomes ubiquitous in computing. Um, I believe that access control is actually more fundamental to computing than most people give it credit for. Most data services you can think of as being able to provide the capability of reading, writing, or distributing rights to data. And that's how your calendar works, that's how email works, that's how workflow works. Yours is perfectly possible, and we have implemented those applications, not using the logic built into the application, but using the access control framework to actually deliver those logic. And what that does is it provides interoperability between applications. Everything's pretty much composed of the, the, the same thing. So again, being able to read, write, and distribute privileges or distribute access rights to be able to read and write data is fundamental to applications in general. So NGAC could become very ubiquitous and there, what there needs to be are, are products. We need good administrative tools for expressing and visualizing those products and I think the, the user community should, would, will embrace it.